Okay, uh, today we will start chapter 11. Okay, it's chapter 11. The concept of chapter 11 is to convert the shear balance into generic equation that we can use it in any kind of problem. So you don't need to set up shear balance anymore. You don't need to consider what kind of shape of the shell should be. Okay, that equation can be set up bring it out and just drop some terms. Just like when you work on equation of motion or equation of continuity. Okay? So basically it will, for today we will give you a derivation for equation of energy. We call this one equation of energy. So in the same principles, equation of energy is developed based on shear balance. But we just write down, write it down for general shell. The most general shell for rectangular coordinate would be a cube with the size delta x, delta y, delta z. Okay? If you consider that this kind of shell is in the system that contains both convection and conduction. Okay? So there will be energy transfer into the shell by any means, both convection, conduction, and work. And it will be transferred out of the shell as well. We can set up the shell balance equation like this, like what we did earlier. The rate of energy in any form going into the shell minus the one going out plus rate of work done by external force on the shell and plus rate of energy production should equal to zero. Okay? If you look into these two terms, in and out, there are three means. Okay? You can divide these into three terms by the means of energy transfer. First, it will be conduction. Second would be convection. What is the third kind? The third kind is supposed to be just remember the in and out term supposed to be dealing with the vector E, right? E is consisting of three terms, conduction, convection, and work, right? Like you have Q, you have 1 over 2 rho V squared plus something, and then you have tau dot V. This is work, okay? And in general, this is not a general work. This is what we call flow work. It's, it's a work associated with the movement of the fluid. All right? So the last term here is supposed to be work. Done by molecular transport. Okay? Now, if you reconsider energy in the system, according to thermodynamics, energy can be divided into three parts. And it, there are only three kinds of energy existed in our world. First, it would be kinetic energy. Right? Then you have potential energy. Lastly, you will have internal energy. Okay? We have only three kinds of energy. And then the means of energy transfer, you have only two kinds, heat and work. Right? Now, so if you consider here for the energy 
the term of energy going in and going out. There are three forms of energy there. Okay? In these two terms, we consider only heat. I'm sorry. We only, if I write down correctly, this one would be rho h v plus tau dot v. Right? The energy carried by fluid that we take account in for the term in and out is these two terms. So that in and out are considered for kinetic energy and internal energy only. Right? So this one has been taking account for for the conduction term, I'm sorry, for the convection term. What about this term? How can we incorporate potential energy into our energy balance equation? Normally, potential energy is associated with um, position in a force field, like height, that means position in the gravimetric field. Okay? Generally, if you just neglect the electrical field or magnetic field, for general, um, for general transport phenomena problems, the only field that we consider would be gravimetric field. So the position in gravimetric field is level, right? That's a general uh, potential energy form. It's associated with position in, in the relative height. If you look closely, this term is closely correlated with gra gravity, G, G term. And we already consider gravity to be our external force. So this term is essentially related to the term work done by external force. Okay? Because potential energy is related to gravity. And gravity here can be considered as external force for the flow of fluid. So therefore, whenever we consider gravity, gravity as external force, the potential energy is supposed to be already incorporated. Okay? So if you do is something like that, you just take this term and somehow regroup. Doesn't work. If you re regroup it, you, you can rearrange the equation, this one, to get energy coming in as kinetic energy and internal energy by means of convection. Okay? kinetic and internal by means of conduction and then work done by molecular transport. These two terms are convex, conduction, convection, right? The conduction term in, convection term in and out in terms of both kinetic and internal energy are incorporated within these two terms. Okay? The work done by molecular transport is here. Okay? Work done by external force is down here, associated with potential energy. Right? And then you have rate of energy production there. In, in a sense, this one would be work in other forms rather than mechanical works. And in general, unless we supply some electricity or nuclear reaction inside our system, this term is normally neglect. Normally, we do not have special kinds of heat or energy transfer as other form of work. So this term in chapter 11 is dropped, right? 
And then everything in and out in any form of energy by any means combined supposed to be equal to rate of accumulation of energy in the system. And rate of accumulation of energy, if you consider every term up here on the left hand side to be energy going in. This one is net rate of energy going into the system. Right? These two are net rate of energy going in. This one is rate of work, rate of work done on the system by means of external force or anything. So four terms on the left hand side are amount of energy added to the system. Therefore, the right hand side term is supposed to be rate of energy increase in the system. Okay? And in the system, even though we have three kinds of energy, kinetic potential internal, we will consider only kinetic and internal energy. Because normally we will say that our system stays still, does not move, the, the whole system does not move, only the fluid inside moves. And therefore the potential energy is not, is not as significant as kinetic and internal energy change in the system. All right? If your system losing energy, then the net rate, either these two terms, will be negative sign. And then somehow the right hand side would get negative sign. That means the energy in the whole system is decreased. Okay? So the whole equation here is written in terms of energy change upon the increase of energy. If you have the decrease in energy, each term will be just negative. Okay? 